Hi, my name is Brian McKenna. I'm a product manager at IOHK. Today we're going to talk about 51% attack resistance for proof of work blockchains. As we have seen recently on Ethereum Classic, 51% attacks have a devastating impact. These attacks rock confidence and can jeopardize the viability and future of these ecosystems. In their paper, Securing Proof-of-Work Ledgers via Checkpointing, IOHK researchers Dimitris Karakostas and Agilos Kies introduced the concept of a federated distributed checkpointing service to protect against such 51% attacks. These trusted checkpointing nodes act like training wheels to protect the proof-of-work chain where the hash power is low and the system is under attack. Once the mining power reaches a level where attacks are not financially viable, this system can be turned off. Crucially, the system is opt-in, and some clients may choose not to use the checkpoints if they so wish. There's more detail on this research paper in, at the IOHK website. Um, we have implemented and successfully tested this checkpointing system, running this with Ouroboros BFT um, against uh, the Ethereum Classic client Mantis. In the demonstration to follow, we will show how using checkpointing protects a proof-of-work network and how, if it had been in place, the recent 51% attacks on EDC would not have been successful. Radic is one of the main developers on checkpointing and will now run through the setup in more detail and how the network behaves when under a double spend attack and also a liveness attack. Charles Morgan, head of IOHK cybersecurity, will, will represent the attacker. We will first show how the network responds when checkpointing is not enabled and then we'll turn checkpointing on and repeat the attack to show 51% attack resistance. Over to Radic to start the demonstration. Thanks, Brian. I'm Radek Tkaczyk, and I'm a software developer at IOHK. I'm going to present checkpointing in action. The setup we're going for, to use for the demo is as follows. We have four mining nodes, three of which are regular honest nodes, and the fourth one is an attacker. That one has been deployed on a much more powerful machine to give it advantageous mining power. We also have five checkpointing federation nodes. Those are not mining and the checkpointing service is currently disabled. Miner 5 is not relevant for this demo. Charles is now in position to start his attack. Thanks Radic. As a double spend attacker, I need to have the majority mining power. You can see from the dashboard I've achieved this in the last 58 blocks as I have mined 59% of the blocks, and this should be enough to run this majority attack. The attacking node is behaving as a regular honest node, and what I have done is prepared the configuration to put it this into attack mode. The attack is configured to selfishly mine in chains of 20 blocks and is configured to start at block 120. So we can now fast forward in blocks and Radic can show the network's behavior. Thanks, Charles. We are currently at block 124, so the preparation for the attack should have commenced. You can see from the logs of the attacking node, it has already mined eight blocks and it is withholding those blocks and will broadcast these to the network when the length of the subchain reaches 20. In the meantime, let's try and send the transaction to the honest chain. So the transaction is sent. Soon we will be able to view it in the explorer. If we inspect a block, we can see that these blocks are still being mined by the honest nodes. When the attack will occur, this message will say you're under attack. As we can see, all these blocks so far are honest. We can now see that the transaction has been included in block 132. Let's compare the hashes of this transaction and the one we sent. we can see that this is indeed the same transaction. Okay, something happened there. This new branch made by the attacker has been synced and we can see 
that the transaction that was made on block 132 is not there anymore. And if we inspect the block, we can in fact see that it was mined by the attacker. Okay, let's move on and try to prevent this attack. The next attack should happen at block 150. Let's enable the checkpointing service. We can see it starting up and quite soon we should be able to see the checkpoints appear on the chain. It is interesting to see that block 137 is a checkpoint, since the attack produced blocks up to 139. This is normal, as the checkpointing service will choose blocks based on block number. It does so at a given interval, which is currently 4. And block 136 was the latest matching block to be followed by a checkpoint. While we wait for the attack to occur, let me show you a bit more about checkpoints themselves. Checkpoints are basically regular blocks, but with additional data in the header, and they do not contain any transactions. It is not visible here, but a checkpoint contains signatures of the signing nodes from the Federation. I will query the, query the block using JSON RPC to show these. So as you can see, the checkpoint is a regular block. It contains this special checkpoint attribute in the header and that has the signatures of the Federation nodes that signed the preceding block. Even though there are five Federation nodes, we only see three signatures here. That is okay, the Federation works in that way. As soon as it has enough votes, it considers the consensus to be reached and the vote is basically uh, a, single, a single node marking the block to be checkpointed. We are currently at block 155, so the attacker should have already started preparing his attack. As you can see, it has prepared 8 blocks already. Let's now try to send the transaction again. The chain is growing, so soon we should be able to see the transaction appearing. It is currently pending. There it is. We can see that this transaction has been included in block 160. Moving on, in the honest chain we are currently at block 165. Let's see how the attacker is doing. As you can see from this message, he is finished preparing the selfishly mined branch. It's all up to block 169. So far the honest nodes have not followed that chain. But just to be sure, let's wait to block 170 something. We are currently at block 172 and as you can see this is a honest block and so are all its parents. But most importantly the transaction we sent is still at block 160. So the way it works is very simple you just cannot roll back a checkpoint. Once a checkpoint is there, the attacking chain that was originating beyond the last checkpoint could never have been accepted by the honest nodes. Now over to Charles to present another type of attack. Thanks, Radic. There's another way I can attack the network by having a 51% majority. It is to try and attack the liveliness of the network. That is, trying to prevent transactions from becoming stable in the chain. While it is still possible for this type of attack to happen with checkpointing in place, the effectiveness of this attack is greatly reduced because it is now constrained to only a small set of transactions that have occurred between the two checkpoints, and it cannot spread any further. I have already configured and deployed the attacker node so that it will selfishly mine subchains that are three blocks long. That's the amount of blocks 
between the checkpoints. I have it start immediately after one checkpoint and then continue running until the next checkpoint is reached. Thanks, Charles. We can already see this attack happening here. These three blocks were mined by the attacker. You can see block 194 here, which is an anonymous block, but with good probability this will soon get replaced by a dishonest chain. So this didn't work. These last three blocks have been mined honestly, and that actually shows the checkpointing prevention in action. In essence, having checkpoints decreases the maximum length of the selfishly mined chain that the attacker can produce, which in turn decreases probability of its success. Now let's try sending some transactions to the chain. We can see these transactions being included at block 210. They were sent at block 196, so it took 14 blocks for them to end up in the chain. And that's it from this demonstration. Thanks for your time and I hope it gave you a good overview of how checkpointing system could be implemented. Mm -hmm.